tariff barriers. India has also reduced its sensitive list by 30%. There should not, however, be any room for complacency. We will have to continue to take trade facilitating measures that will increase imports from Pakistan to much greater heights. <coughs> As India and Pakistan move towards normalizing their bilateral trade regimes, there will be new trading opportunities for both countries. There is a large untapped trade potential between the two countries. And various estimates suggest that potential trade could vary between 0.5 to 20 times of the actual trade. A large part of this, as most of us know, has been taking place through informal channels, largely through third countries, and goes unaccounted for. But I'm sure that as both countries move towards normal trade relations with the removal of the trade barriers and the subsequent reduction of trade costs, a significant part of informal trade will shift to formal trade channels. Trade facilitation measures such as the development of integrated check posts will give a boost to the bilateral trade through the land route. One other step to give further fillet to the bilateral trade between the two countries could be in production of containerization. Rail-based movement of containers across the boundary will not only ease the road traffic, but also help trade in offering door-to-door -door services to its customers, which would also help in cutting down the transaction cost. There are a large trade possibilities in several sectors, such as agriculture and processed food items, petroleum products, chemicals, automobiles, processed food, and textiles. These possibilities could be realized effectively if firms link up to global and regional value chains. There are also possibilities in the services sector. Information technology, healthcare, and audiovisual sectors are most promising. For deeper and stronger trade linkages, it is important that there are foreign investment flows between the two countries. India now welcomes foreign investment from Pakistan, and Indian industry would be glad to invest in Pakistan. In another major step, both countries have moved towards a more liberal visa regime. That is what I had been also fighting for before coming to the government. The new visa regime now facilitates simpler cross-border travel, replacing the old visa regime signed in 1974. The new visa agreement will facilitate multiple entry and reporting free visas for businessmen, allowing them to visit five cities instead of three, as was the case earlier. It also allows visas on arrival for elderly people. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, we can see that tremendous progress has been made in the last couple of years to normalize trade and economic ties between India and Pakistan. But a lot still needs to be done. And both countries need to work together in several areas to be able to realize their untapped trade potential. The extent to which the trade potential can be realized between the two countries will depend upon a host of factors. Several impediments remain to be addressed. A concerted effort needs to be made to create multi-level channels of communication which would bridge the information gap and generate a significant change in the business environment of the two countries. The success of trade normalization process will also be determined by the role of institutions that are involved in the process, including different government departments at the state, center, and border levels, business and trade associations, non-governmental organizations, and the media. For tapping the full potential of the bilateral trade, development of infrastructure needs to be strengthened. 
India and Pakistan share a common heritage of railway system, and both the countries have broad gauge railway network. The research, development, and standardization carried out by Indian railways in the areas of track, rolling stock, signaling, and telecommunication, IT, etc., is an immense pool of knowledge which can be harnessed to provide cost effective solutions. Similarly, there is adequate manufacturing base in India for various sub assemblies and components used in these items. We can also work together to develop technology solutions in the railway sector for our common needs. As a long term strategy for developing our economic ties and economies, both India and Pakistan have agreed to be part of UN project of Trans-Asian Railway Network. India is hosting the seventh meeting of the chief executives of the railways of South and Southeast Asian countries on 18th and 19th of March 2013 in New Delhi. This meeting would deliberate on the role of railways in the transport sector, inter-country linkages, and would provide an opportunity for enhanced regional cooperation in the rail sector. The chairman of Pakistan Railways and other senior railway officials, including Director General Operations of Pakistan Railway, would be particip participating in this two-day meeting. We would be glad to welcome the delegation here. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate the fact that trade and commerce have proven to be the most effective way of establishing peace. In the present scenario of global integration, where borders have virtually lost meaning for much of the world, it is essential to remove all barriers to cross-border movement of people, goods, services, and ideas. Initially, India and Pakistan had felt that without addressing core issues, it would not be possible to move forward on economic and trade issues. But now, things are changing. And there is a whiff of fresh air indicating a new beginning in the environment that exists in both the countries. Across the board, there is a convergence of views that India-Pakistan relations need to be normalized and to build upon, to live in peaceful coexistence and to grow with self-respect and love for each other. We should work towards accelerating economic and business change as well as societal change. It is an opportunity today that we can move beyond a perception issue. Of course, there are political and strategic issues, but we can go beyond those and focus on economic issues. Improved relations between India and Pakistan will also set a new paradigm for the integration of South Asia as a whole. Emerging trade trends now point towards a shift in traditional engines of growth from industrial countries to emerging economies. In such a scenario, strengthening the process of South Asian integration presents tremendous opportunities. However, in terms of intra-regional trade and investment in goods and services, South Asia continues to lag far behind other regions. Clearly, a lasting peace between India and Pakistan, backed by improved trade and commerce links between them, is essential to ensure a stable and prosperous South Asia. In the light of this, I am happy to note that all of us have, who have gathered here today have done so at a very opportune time to discuss ways of taking forward the process of trade integration between India and Pakistan. We need to bridge the gap between academia and the policy makers. And I am glad this conference brings up such an opportunity. I hope that all of us present here, having come together on this platform, 
with a shared vision of bilateral cooperation and mutual prosperity, will be able to come up with concrete inputs that can be incorporated in the ongoing dialogues and negotiations. Thank you, and I wish you the very best. Thank you very much.